The sanctity of human life is under assault. Find out how and what you can do about it in this edition of Life Matters with Brian Johnston, Western Regional Director of the National Right to Life Committee. He has served in many capacities while advocating for innocent lives. As California Commissioner on Aging, as Chairman of the California Pro-Life Council, on the board of the National Legal Center for the Medically Dependent and Disabled. And now here's our host, Brian Johnston. Welcome back to Life Matters. We're your program on the right to life, on the idea that that is. It is a singular idea declared by our founders, but expressed throughout history up until that point. It's an essential element of political philosophy that our founders said was necessary in order for us to have a just government, that to ensure these rights, the right to life being the first, that to ensure these rights, governments are instituted among men. In other words, if you're going to have a just government, you better make sure that the right to life is there. And that's what we talk about here on Life Matters, about the culture of life that has come from that idea. And the battle of ideas now, and this battle is going on right now, And if you have not been awakened to the fact that you are in a battle of ideas, ideas that want to get a hold of your mind and the minds of your loved ones, if you're not aware of that, then you've already lost. You have to contend earnestly for these ideas that are swirling around our culture. Our culture, in many ways, is on the brink. And I believe it's because we have forgotten the essential principles on which our culture is built. You and I know that the right to be alive is pretty important to us, but it's also important to those around us. And that's why our culture and society and government itself needs to be committed to the right to life. We've had an extraordinary year this last year, and it looks like this coming year is going to be just as extraordinary. It's going to be a doozy. You know, there's things that have been going on this week, and we'll talk about those another time as things sort out. What I do want to do right now, because this is January, and you may not be aware, but in January of each year, since 1973, the Right to Life movement has commemorated the passage of Roe v. Wade. And you'll hear about that in the media. You'll hear about Roe v. Wade in the march in Washington, D.C. You'll hear debates about it. You'll have the popular media even talk about it in the woman's right to choose. But there's stuff that you haven't been told. And today we're going to spend some time digging into what really happened on January 22, 1973. Something you may not know, but you do need to know, is that there were two decisions. That's right. Two very important decisions directly related to the abortion issue were handed down on that day. One is Roe, and you've heard about that. But the companion and interlock decision was Doe versus Bolton, also handed down that same day. Very few people talk about that, but they're interlocked decisions. And there's things that have emanated from these decisions that have impacted our society. You need to understand that, Roe and Doe. And before we go to our first break, I want to let you know that I have written a book on Roe and Doe and what they really mean. And I promise you, it's going to surprise you because the real understanding of Roe v. Wade has not been shared in the popular media. In fact, many pro-life people don't fully understand the full weight of Roe v. Wade because it's only demonstrated in Doe versus Bolton. So these two decisions, and the name of this book that's coming out soon, is The Evil Twins, Roe and Doe, How the Supreme Court Unleashed Medical Killing. Yeah, that book is The Evil Twins, Roe and Doe, How the Supreme Court Unleashed Medical Killing, and it's going to be released in April. But that's available for pre-order right now at a discount. And you can look at newregencypub.com. That's New Regency Publishing. It's newregencypub.com. And you can hear and read about that book. 
and get a special pre-order discount. And when we come back, I'm going to tell you some of the content. In fact, I promise you, it'll startle you. It genuinely will startle you. We'll talk about that when we come back. Life Matters continues after this. Did you know that California has a law in the books that says you need to protect babies born alive in the course of an abortion? But that law is simply ignored. We need to shine a light on this cover-up of the abortion industry in our state. Go to CaliforniaProLife.org and click on the Light of Day Project. We need the facts about late-term abortion to be examined and made known. We need the government doing its job to protect lives. We need the light of day on this. Hear that sound? That's the sound of an exotic jungle. And you know that some of the finest coffees in the world come from very remote and exotic jungle areas. Winged Spur Coffee is one of our sponsors, and Winged Spur is a very special coffee. It's really founded by missionaries that have returned from some of those places. Places like Mexico, Peru, Kenya, Costa Rica, Bali, Uganda. And in their travels, they came across some really good coffee. When they came back here, they decided to start importing these. And what they do is roast on your request and then fly that fresh roasted coffee to you. They also share their profits with folks like us. We encourage you to go to Winged Spur Coffee. That's wingedspurcoffee.com. Or go to our website and click on the icon for Winged Spur. I think you're going to like it. And now back to more Life Matters with Brian Johnston. Welcome back to Life Matters. I told you we're going to talk about Roe versus Wade and Doe versus Bolton, the companion decisions that came down on January 22nd, 1973. Now, if you've heard anything about the pro-life issue, you are aware of Roe versus Wade, but many are not aware of Doe versus Bolton. And these companion decisions are interlocked. They're intertwined. And that is what has brought us to this moment culturally. But I have to tell you, they're misunderstood. In fact, you cannot understand Roe versus Wade. And you might say, well, of course, you're pro-life, and you're going to condemn Roe versus Wade and say bad things about it. I'm going to let you hear from pro-abortion advocates who condemn Roe versus Wade. They don't like how it was written. They do like the conclusion, but they strongly disagree with the reasoning and the methods. In fact, they say it's confusing and that it's wrongly written. I'm going to explain in detail why you need to understand that, and more importantly, why you need to understand what Doe versus Bolton does. These are deadly twin decisions. These are joined, you might say, at the hip. They are terrifying, and the implications are grave, and you're going to understand that as we go through our program. And then also, if you get a chance, you can pre-order my book, on the deadly twins, Roe and Doe, and how the Supreme Court has unleashed medical killing. On January 22, 1973, the Supreme Court released its two interlocked abortion decisions regarding the laws of the entire nation. They're only dealing with two different states. In Texas, the issue of Roe v. Wade came before them, and they wrote a decision, just as Blackman was the author, but in fact, That dealt with Texas law, but the implications of the decision were that all the laws of all 50 states needed to be struck. You may have heard that before. But they also handed down a companion interlocking decision, Doe versus Bolton. And Doe versus Bolton dealt with the laws of Georgia. And Georgia had abortion laws that Blackman again addressed. I'll explain later how he did it and why you need to understand the depth of what he undid in that decision. Doe versus Bolton. Remember that name? When people tell you about Roe v. Wade and how it authorizes a woman's right to choose and how a woman has a right to her own body, do you know that they're lying? Do you know that Justice Blackman in Roe v. Wade specifically denied that right? 
in writing. He did not like the feminist worldview. He did not believe that there was a right to an abortion because a woman had a right to her body. You may not know that if you listen to the television set and the radio, the secular radio, the dominant media culture that's already committed to this idea, but he didn't do that. Justice Blackman, in several places, was quite adamant, though it had been explicitly sought by those who had intervened in Roe v. Wade, he specifically said he was not granting to women the right to choose. The right to privacy does not include a right to do as she wishes with her body. That's what he said. And specifically, that, quote, a woman's constitutional right to an abortion is not absolute. That's a direct quote from Roe v. Wade. That's section 410, U.S., page 189. So he's explicit about this. Why do feminists now assert then that this is about bodily autonomy? When he said explicitly is not, it's because you need to read Doe versus Bolton. In the second and often unexamined companion decision, Blackman is explicit. The right he is granting is to the doctor. There is to be no cloud of prosecution. That's what he was concerned about that doctors might be prosecuted. In the book, I explain even more deeply how Justice Blackman had worked for the Mayo Clinic, and he was really fascinated by doctors. In Roe v. Wade, he dealt with the issue of abortion in a very ham-handedly way and confused a lot of people. In Doe v. Bolton, cut to the chase, he was authorizing a doctor's right to choose. So let me tell you this, I know a lot of attorneys who are actively involved in the abortion debate, and I know them on both sides of the issue. Many will assert mastery and a working knowledge of Roe versus Wade's intricacies. As you know, he goes into detail about first trimester and second trimester, and then third trimester abortion. And it seems like he is outlining limits and parameters, but It's very confusing. And while there are some attorneys that will say they understand Roe, honest lawyers never make any such claim. And this is why. You can't understand it. But this is what's more frightening. I know many more commentators and reporters who will explain the Roe versus Wade decision at great length, how it grants a woman's right to choose, etc. The problem is that this very well known decision cannot possibly be explained. It does not, and it cannot make sense. Even liberal legal scholars like Alan Dershowitz, you're familiar with him, and Cass Sunstein, they deny its ability to stand on its own merits. Progressive professor Lawrence Tribe is very clear. This is a quote from Lawrence Tribe. One of the most curious things about Roe is that behind its own verbal smokescreen, The substantive judgment on which it rests is nowhere to be found. There was a clerk that Justice Blackman had. He loved Justice Blackman. His name was Edward Lazarus. A clerk is someone who works at the Supreme Court for the justices. And Edward Lazarus wrote about Roe later. Again, he said he loved Justice Blackman like a grandfather. But this is what he wrote. As a matter of constitutional interpretation and judicial method, Justice Blackman's opinion, that's Roe, provides essentially no reasoning in support of its holding. And in the almost 30 years since Roe's announcement, no one has produced a convincing defense of Roe on its own terms. It can't stand on its own. It is only in understanding this problem of Roe v. Wade that you can see the real significance of its companion decision Doe versus Bolton. And that's what I want you to understand. The decisions were linked and they were released at the same time. They were released in tandem. In Doe versus Bolton, Justice Blackman switches the themes entirely. He does not focus on stages of pregnancy or on the woman. He now focuses on the individual who is about to do the abortion. Doe versus Bolton, in many ways, is written 
for the doctor, the abortionist. The state's interest in protecting life in Doe versus Bolton is specifically downgraded. He said that. The Hippocratic tradition of never harming a human life has been dismissed. And then at any time in pregnancy, psychological and societal questions could be the determining factor. No physical medical conditions need be present to do an abortion at any time. This is what's critical. While Roe versus Wade talks about the various trimesters, remember, there is an exception. And it's not for life. It's for the life or health of the woman. And then Blackman goes on to define what he means by health, and he instructs the physician in this. By health, he means societal or psychological or emotional reasons, including the woman's age. All of these can therefore be related to the woman's health. Now, you could drive a Mack truck through that. And remember, he's saying in the doctor's judgment, it's up to the physician to determine if these factors come into play. It doesn't say that she has asked for it for those reasons. It says that the physician is authorized for these health reasons, these societal and psychological issues. So what we have, there need not be any physical medical conditions present. And that's in Doe versus Bolton, 410 of the U.S. decisions of the Supreme Court. 410 U.S. 191, page 191. Blackman's definition of health of the mother is a gauzy, gestalt, psychology issue, and it justifies this deadly surgical act. His description isn't about the physical. It's about the thoughts in the physician's mind and his best judgment. He has been empowered. I say he, he or she, the abortionist. That's who Doe versus Bolton is authorizing. The physician has a choice. Known feminist and abortion advocate, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, is very clear about it. She's openly faulted this court's approach for actually being about a doctor's, and I quote, about a doctor's freedom to practice his profession as he thinks best. It isn't woman-centered, she said. It was physician-centered. Close quote. It is this issue, then, that's the real overarching issue in these decisions. What he authorized was legally authorizing medical killing. Now, you've heard this on the program before. I go into greater depths in other programs, but I want you to understand here. Up until January 22nd, 1973, physicians honored the code, the oath, of Hippocrates, that you never harm, that you would care for, and if you could not cure, that you would comfort those in your care, but never kill. Medicine was never meant to kill, and for 3,000 years, that has been the guideline in Western civilization. That's been the code. If someone is vulnerable, you just don't kill them. You comfort them, care for them. An incredibly important principle that was removed in January of 73 and explicitly in Doe versus Bolton. Many were confused by Roe versus Wade. They were confusedly handled in Roe versus Wade. And even Justice Blackman came around to admit that. It was ham handedly dealt with and arbitrarily established these trimesters. But what is crisply and incisively granted to physicians in Doe versus Bolton is the right to use their profession to deadly effect, and as they personally saw fit, no one could question them. That's what Doe versus Bolton does. That's why Roe is so dangerous. We're now living in this ever-expanding world of medical killing. The implications of this, of dismissing medical ethics as well as legal ethics, you know, in legal ethics, the purpose of the law is to defend those that can't defend themselves. And the purpose of medical ethics is that those professionals who are in immediate contact with the medically vulnerable, that they never use that vulnerable situation to kill a human being. Both of those principles were violated on January 22nd, 73. 
the law was violated and medicine was violated. It's this physician's right to choose, as Justice Ginsburg points out. It's the physician's right to choose that is the only definitive conclusion of the two deadly decisions. And we're going to go into all of that when we come back on Life Matters. Life Matters continues after this. Are you willing to step up to be a lifeguard? We're asking you to consider becoming a Life Matters lifeguard. On Life Matters, we cut to the depths of this cultural battle of ideas that has robbed America of its core values and robbed the innocent of their right to life. Anything you can pledge is appreciated. But if you pledge $19 a month, we will make you part of the Life Matters lifeguard team, getting you the important tools and dynamic information to help save lives and encourage others in understanding the lurking dangers in today's deadly cross-currents of culture. Your pledge helps us with our costs of broadcast. It keeps the full understanding of the right to life going out over our numerous radio stations and also facilitates the important podcast that carries even more programming. Please go to the front page of the Life Matters website and click on the Donate button. Your donation is deeply appreciated. Well, now we have a special opportunity for Life Matters listeners. Wherever you are, you can be on the air. That's right. If you have a question for Life Matters, we have a special way for you to ask that question. Tell us where you're listening from, speak slowly and clearly, and you can record a message. Go to lifematters.life. That's lifematters.life. Scroll to the bottom of the page, and there you'll see Send a Message to Brian Johnston. Using your computer's microphone, you can record a message, and it'll record clearly. You can't go longer than 90 seconds, but please feel free. If you have a question or a comment, make sure you keep it polite. We do have to edit, and we can't put impolite stuff on the air, but we do want to hear from you. That's lifematters.life. Scroll to the bottom of the page and give us your thoughts. And now back to more Life Matters with Brian Johnston. Hey, well, welcome back. As I said before our break, we are going to talk now about Roe. Roe versus Wade does not come to any valid conclusions. It's very Gaussian in specific. It talks about pregnancy in very vague terms. It intentionally ignores the child's life, intentionally. And even though feminists and the media say that this establishes a woman's right to choose, that this establishes a right of bodily integrity. Justice Blackman explicitly says it does not. He explicitly condemns that thinking as off base. So why can they say this? It's because of Doe v. Bolton. And Doe v. Bolton does much more than deal with pregnancy. It does much more. Doe v. Bolton is an assault on the medical profession and how we as a culture deal with vulnerable human beings. It is the medical profession that we have honored for these many, many, many years because they always care for and always have the best interest in much more different circumstances that vulnerable patients now need to be very, very concerned. And we're seeing as we live now in a situation of medical need for most of society. There's something odd about how the medical profession is treating this biomedical situation in the United States, that the advance of a virus is in fact not about protecting. As you know, in some states, those who are most vulnerable have not been given care. And ironically, in many places, those who have no illness in the name of medicine are being isolated. It's the very opposite of how, historically, medicine has dealt with quarantines. In many states in this nation, the healthiest people are quarantined. In the name of medicine? In the name of medical science? And those who have been most vulnerable have been ignored and sometimes to their demise. This is very alarming. But what is most alarming is that the Supreme Court in 73 outlined that that physicians should have absolute right to do whatever they think. And you'll find out more in my book, 
As I said, this book is coming out this year. It's called The Evil Twins, Roe and Doe, How the Supreme Court Unleashed Medical Killing. And it's going to be published in April. It's available for pre-order at a discount. You can go to newregencypub.com. That's newregencypub.com. I'll talk about this more, but unless you understand the Doe v. Bolton decision and the authority now that physicians were given to kill, unless you understand that, you can't understand Roe v. Wade. And I'm not the only one that says that. When pro-abortion individuals say that, when Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg says that, you have to understand that there's something going on here, something that even the pop media don't talk about. They haven't explored it. They've gotten into the details of abortion, in the details of pregnancy, and very often its purpose is to confuse you. As one reporter said to me, he said, hey, well, but that means you're, you're saying you know when life begins. And my response to him was, well, wait, wait a second. If that's the case, then we don't know when your life began. If we don't know when your life began, does that mean I can kill you? Well, we do know when life begins. And so the way this issue has been presented, Roe v. Wade and its analysis of pregnancy and abortion has confused people on the issues. And they're more than happy to confuse others. So make sure that you engage in the battle of ideas. Make sure that you understand what's taken place and why January 22, 1973 is of such significance to our culture. Because the values we hold dear have emanated from the principle of the right to life, the right to life particularly of the most vulnerable human beings. And obviously a child in the womb is self-evident a very valuable and very vulnerable human being. We must protect them. And we also must protect all vulnerable human beings when they're in medical care. That's essential, but it's been forgotten. And very few are willing to speak up about it. It's time that we speak up. To follow Life Matters on all social media and to subscribe to the Life Matters podcast, go to lifematters.life, where you will find everything you need to know to share life, culture, and the battle of ideas with everyone you care about. Life Matters is a production of the California Pro-Life Council, the state affiliate of National Right to Life. Wherever you are in the nation, you can find out more at National Right to Life, You can find vital pro-life information and also find the access to your state and local Right to Life affiliate. Get informed and get involved.